Hey ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? So real quick, uh, on today's agenda, I've got something a little bit different for you guys. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I posted the Ontario 45A crit, and as a result, I got quite a few people actually hitting me up in the DMs on Instagram and just other platforms and in the comments here on YouTube. And a lot of people were curious how I get my data overlays on my GoPro footage. So I shoot with the GoPro Hero 9 in the front, and the GoPro Hero 8 in the rear. And then what I do is I actually overlay the data from my Wahoo, and this, this works with any head unit, um, but I overlay the data from my Wahoo directly on top of that GoPro footage. I have my own template for it and everything built, and then I just go from there, edit the footage, and then do my voiceovers. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through my exact workflow and how I would go about taking all my race footage, compiling all of that, putting it into a free software, it's actually Garmin Verb, which I'll show you where to download that and everything. And then also how I import my data from my Wahoo or any other head unit. And then also how I'm gonna go ahead and put those data overlays on this footage, sync everything up, and then actually export that and get it ready to put in Adobe Premiere Pro chop it up there and then do the voiceover. I will stop right after the Garmin Verb export just because uh, you guys are concerned with getting the overlays on the footage. You're not necessarily concerned with how I edit the actual footage itself and then you know what I have to say about it. If you haven't seen those race videos so far and you wanna see the finished product of basically what I'm about to show you, then go ahead and click the card uh, up above I'll put a link to that video, um, and then it should be super simple. Just click on that and go check it out, and let me know what you think. But anyway, just to get started, uh, we can pop over to Google here. And as you can see, pretty straightforward. What you're going to search, though, is uh, Garmin Verb. And it's a free software, Garmin Verb software. Typically, uh, Garmin created this to actually work with the Garmin Verb itself. I believe it's a type of camera and then Garmin head units. However, it does work with any head unit where you can export your FIT file, which is super cool for Wahoo users and folks who maybe aren't big Garmin fans and also folks who are shooting on GoPro. It works no problem. So you gotta come over here and first thing that pops up, verb edit for Windows, updates and downloads. I am running Windows on my editing PC, so there you go. If you are on a Mac, I've used it on Mac. I had it on my MacBook Pro uh, 13 and a half, and that ran pretty solid. The big problem I was having though was my Mac just didn't have enough computing power to run Verb in the end and to scrub and edit clips at high speed. So that was one of the big hangups there. And ultimately, when I built my editing PC, things got a lot smoother with Garden Verb. So I do recommend having a pretty powerful PC if you're going to edit any kind of 4K video like I do. So once you're over at the Garmin Verb site, obviously I already have this downloaded, but what you would do is you would come in here, you would just hit download. Uh, this will be, you know, Verb Edit for Windows, It'll give you the most up-to-date software version, and then boom, uh, this is the icon for it. I have it pinned to my bar since I use it quite a bit, and uh, I don't believe I saved on my desktop, so no sense in jumping over there. But once you do have Verb Edit, uh, you can go here, just type in Verb Edit, obviously it's an app on Windows 10, and you can run that. Once you run that, you will get a screen that looks something like this. Actually, I'll jump out to the main gallery. That way you guys can just see what's going on. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're actually going to hit create video. And it'll ask you for a video title. Let's just call this uh, Ontario 45A. I've already made this, so I'm going to actually call this Stitch. Just because... Um, with my workflow, I'm gonna give you guys kind of a pro tip here that makes syncing your G metrics, which is your FIT file and your data from your head unit, so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, create a video here, boom, create that video, and then obviously drag and drop clips here to add them to your video. So as you can see, I already have my clips imported here, but if you didn't, you would just come up here to import clips and video, click on that, and then it's gonna say connect a verb to start importing. You don't need to do that. So you can actually just click import other, and then it'll jump into your file explorer here, and then you'll have basically all your clips wherever it was that you stored them. As you can see, this is my workflow and where I save things under my front cam because that's what I wanna add the data to. So I would just select the clips I'm interested in here, one through five, and then open, and that would dump them all in here. 
But since I already have them imported, I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to edit video. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop these directly in my timeline, which is this window down here, I guess. Now, the file names are important here. As you can see, um, they are numbered. So it's GoPro Hero 10513, 20513, and the nomenclature is gonna be like this for pretty much anybody who's shooting on GoPro. Splits it into multiple files. I am shooting 4K, so they're pretty big. So I would drag uh, 10513 down here and then put 20513, just kind of get them all down here in my timeline, 40513, 5, and so on. So we're gonna do six, and I think that's really it. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I, I think this one stops at five because six is actually the, uh, the B race. So only one through five. Drop those in here, and as you can see, a lot of people are having this problem. If you if you mount your GoPro upside down, sometimes your footage um, does show up upside down once you import those files. So you can come here, go to your editing tab on the left, click that, and you're gonna rotate this 180 degrees. Boom, not a problem. And you're gonna do that to actually all of your clips. Just give these a quick rotation, and then boom, you're all set. Now. Key element here, uh, once you get everything set up like this, this is where that pro tip I was talking about comes in. Now, you are gonna wanna import your FIT file, but let's not do that just yet. This is just a quick way to stitch together all your clips, so that way it's one large file. And the reason for this, I will explain in the future. So once you get all your clips in here, they're all stitched together, they're ready to go, just go up here, go ahead and export. And then I actually export in the same frame rate and everything. That way I get full max resolution of what I shot. Now this does compress to some extent your video files. The important thing to remember is once you see this on YouTube, you are really just not going to notice any of the compression, especially if you compress at 4K, 30 FPS. Uh, I will say the file size is pretty huge, 15.8 gigs. So make sure you have plenty of storage space. If you're editing videos like this, you probably have plenty of storage space, but that is just something to think about as you move forward if you're gonna be making race videos like this and everything else. So we could go ahead, and then at this point you would just hit export, make sure you go browse and put it in the proper location you want, and then name the file as you would. I name this Ontario 45A, and this is Stitch because this is the Stitch Together files. I would export this to this folder, but since I have already exported it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step, and that way you guys don't have to wait around and sit here and um, wait for my video to actually compress and export and everything else. So I'm actually gonna create a new file here completely. I think that's the easier way to do this. So I'm gonna create a new video and then I'm gonna call this uh, Ontario 45A, call this Stitch. Actually, since we already stitched it, I will call this with data. So we're gonna create a new video and then boom, we've got that here. So I'll import clips and videos, import other, Ontario 4.5 stitch, boom. And then uh, I'm just gonna import only. I don't wanna copy the clips to my library. You can copy your clips if you want things to run a little bit faster, but my computer's uh, pretty solid, so it will go ahead and just pull from the source files, no problem, and it's not a very big deal for me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and import only. And this is actually pretty fast. The optimizing takes a few seconds. And if you click, what is this? Uh, basically, they're making a lower resolution copy of your clip for easier editing. Uh, when you're ready to export or share the video, they'll still use the full resolution version to ensure best quality output. So once you export it, you'll still have your 4K 30 or 4K 60, whatever you shot in, and then um, the clips will just be optimized for editing. So I will go ahead and jump forward here, and we can continue with adding the data to the actual video file. All right, ladies and gents, as you can see, we are back. Clips are successfully imported and we are fully optimized, ready to go. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then boom, back to our project. So Ontario 4.5 with data is a new name. And you can see the last import is here. Everything is upright and we're all stitched together. So boom, I can go ahead and drop that in there. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna do if you haven't already is you're gonna wanna jump over and jump into your app whatever that app might be, whether that's Wahoo Element, uh, your Garmin app, whatever, and then however you would go about sharing your FIT file. So like if I want to go to history, uh, I would scroll back, I would find this particular ride, 
which is the Ontario Crit A, and I have that under Cycling, April 11th. So I would click that, and then I would click the Share button, and I would do Share FIT File. In this case, I like to do email. I can upload it to Dropbox, but um, I've realized that emailing is pretty much just as easy. And then, so I would actually share via email. It will export the workout to an FIT file. I would type in my own email here, email it to myself, wham, bam. And uh, then I would receive the file in just a few seconds. So once you have your FIT file, this is sort of the next step in everything here. So uh, you're going to go ahead and as you can see, I dropped the new stitched version of this all down here. And the reason that I did that is because having one file, it's much easier to line up what Garmin Verb calls G metrics, which is just your data overlays. It's much easier to line your data up when you have one long continuous clip than when say you had five differential clips and you had to individually add data to each particular clip. And that gets pretty complicated, especially when you have a criterium race or something along these lines where you have multiple laps because you have to figure out where on the GPS the correct lap was. So if for some reason it's showing a lap earlier, a lap late, your data might be not synced correctly. And it's an entire nightmare trying to get that stuff to line up. So I always do this first. I always stitch together my footage, make it one long continuous running clip. And then that way it makes the data overlays themselves way easier when I come back and add them to the clip. Now we're here, we've got this imported on our timeline and the important tab that we're gonna go for is G metrics and G metrics, like I said, is just um, this is just the Garmin version of data overlays. So it says to add overlays, import some data in the data tab. Go ahead and click G metrics, and then you're going to import G metrics. Now, as you can see, I have a few different file logs that are already in here. If you don't yet have yours imported, then what you would want to do is you would want to go on my computer. You can either go ahead and drop your FIT file in here after that, or you can go ahead and browse. I'm gonna go ahead and browse. Uh, I would use this element bolt FIT file. The fit file is basically all the data that was recorded on your computer. And then you would hit open and that would drop in here and then it would take you back to previous imports and it would appear here on this list. Since I have already imported this data and I know it was the 411 data, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And I'm gonna use this data. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of different data types here that were recorded on my Wahoo Element Bolt. And so there's an automatic template that this sort of gives you. I'm not really excited about this template. And the good thing is, is you can adjust all of this. Now I have templates saved here just because I built them over time, but I'll skip that for now and we can come back to saving a template a little bit later. For now, you wanna just go ahead and start adding all your data. So there's some useless stuff in here. Sorry, Garmin Verb, um, I don't need your logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then if you just click it, you can just hit your delete key and it goes away. Um, the course I find is actually really helpful. I enjoy that one. And RPM, speed, all that stuff is important, but I just don't like the layout that it's currently in. So I go ahead and I just basically delete all the standard Garmin gauges and whatnot right off the bat. So now I'm down to just this which is my course map, and I do like that. If you don't like the size of it, you can go ahead and resize it. And if you were to do that, you would just go here. You see you have it selected, you click appearance, and then you can mess with your accent colors and then um, background and everything else. But you go to transform here, and you can shrink the scale. And that shrinks it down, but you can bring it back up. Uh, I personally don't mind it at 100%, so I'm gonna leave it there. And then let's go ahead and add some additional data. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on power because that's my most important. Uh, go to gauges here, click on data type, and then you'll see this drop down on the right and that's gonna give you all the different things that we just saw on the data page that were recorded under your head unit during the time of the race. So now what we want is we do want speed and we want speed recorded, boom. And then it gives you a bunch of different options here. Uh, for the sake of this, I'll just go with what I pretty much normally use, uh, which is one of these gauges down here. I think it's this one. And so you just drag and then you will drop that right here and then boom, there's your speed. 
Same thing that you would do if you wanted to go here and see power. Let's go ahead and drop down here. It says your sensors. Power is an independent sensor. So go ahead and click that. Come down here. And obviously, I'm going to find a matching gauge. And I'll drop that one right next to it. Now, here's where you can go in. And like I said, you can transform this. And I can go in here and put this at you know 60%. Uh, make it a little bit more reasonable. Click on this one, do the same thing, make this also 60%. That way these two match. And so now I've got speed in the lower left hand corner. And I'll put power right next to it and do your best to line these up. Uh, I'll be honest with you, nobody is going to notice if they are one or two frames difference or a few pixels off at the bottom left corner of this. Everybody's really just paying attention to the data itself. Now, if this is something that you wanted to save as a template, you would just go over here to templates and then go ahead and uh, click this little floppy disk here. And that's going to save the current overlay setup and then you can reuse it for other videos. Now, I already have mine, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and load that actually. And so what I have is I have teal and red. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Selecting new template will override your changes. That is fine. So I hit OK. And then now you can see basically the same setup I just had. I have speed on the left, wattage, and then heart rate BPM in this form of graph down below. I have the race course up here in the right. Now, if you copy my overlays exactly with the same color scheme, I will be upset with you. So don't do that. Be original. Uh, and as you can see, we're going to get into this a little bit. And my data is most likely not lined up. And that's that's pretty common with this, um, especially when you know you start at sort of a different time than uh, you know you start recording with two different GoPros, or you start your head unit at a different time than your GoPro starts. Your time isn't accurate on your GoPro. Many different things can cause this not to be lined up. So uh, you're still in the G Metrics tab. You're gonna go back to your data here, and then down here there's G Metrics Sync. So go ahead and click on G Metrics Sync, and now you're gonna see. On the left, you have your video frame, and then on the right here, you have where at on the course you are. Now, I personally like to use satellite here because this gives me key identifiers and markers that I can find on the course that match up with what's going on in the video. So I like to go ahead and kind of start my video here, find like a key element of the course, be it a line and what have you, that you can basically line up. I like to do these stop sign, uh, either the center lines here or the limit lines at each stop intersection. And so like if I play this, boom, I'm going to stop right here. But as you can see, my G-metrics aren't sinking. Uh, so I have not moved over here yet. And the Wahoo apparently thinks that I'm still not in position. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go down here. And I'm going to go ahead and drag my timeline a little bit forward until I find what I believe to be the correct location. As you can see, my dot is now moving. And I'm going to get myself pretty close here. And then if I can zoom further, I can actually drag this along the correct line. And so, boom, I have pushed myself just a little bit further along here. That's pretty darn close. You got to keep in mind that your camera view is actually going to crop out where your wheel and everything is actually at. So I'm a little bit before this white limit line. I'm going to go ahead and try this and see if everything matches up. So after you get everything lined up, or at least you think you're lined up, uh, one thing you can do to go frame by frame is you can click the right and left buttons here. For some reason, mine's been a little wacky on me lately. Um, it's not actually moving. Uh, so anyway, I digress. I just use this and I slide it along the track or the GPS file wherever I need it to go. So after I get everything lined up, I'll go ahead and hit done. And now as you can see, we should be pretty reasonable here. So I'm going to play the video and we're going to see if my metrics make sense. And a lot of the times you can tell because you'll have audio cues. You'll know if you're attacking your power is going to be pretty high. Uh, you can hear when your tires start to make certain noises on the actual video footage itself that, okay, I was doing 900 watts versus, you know, 200. If you're in the draft and you're doing 100 watts in the middle of the race, then you're obviously going to hear freewheeling and things like that too. So let's go ahead and play this and make sure we're lined up. So a little bit of freewheeling there. That makes sense. My power is coming down. And I'm back on it. 
All right, so that seems to make sense. And I'll just jump out here and see a little bit closer to the sprint. We're in the last lap here. This is always a good one. So if you check out your sprint and you know that you put out a certain power at a certain time, say out of the last corner, it's always a good opportunity to double check your metrics. And so I freewheeled there, I could hear it. And then, boom, I'm jumping on it here and the power reflects that. All right, so my G metrics are good to go and I'm all lined up. I have data on everything. My heart rate's lined up. Everything makes sense. Super simple sync, like I said, because this is all one continuous clip. Now, what would happen if I did not have this as one continuous clip is I would add it to the first clip and it would be correct for about five minutes and then I would have to find the point in my data file at five minutes into the race and that really wouldn't make sense. And so I do it this way. Luckily, like I said, I have my template saved where I adjusted my colors and everything. If you want to change your appearance, you can go here, change your accent colors, play around with this, transform the size of each individual piece, I guess you would say, or metric, and then line everything up that way. Uh, the course, like I said, is here. That's just position. And then, you know, all your data that was captured and recorded is right here. Um, I highly recommend saving a template that you enjoy. Make it the same for all your race videos. And then from here, once everything is stitched up, I would just go ahead and go back to export. And then same thing, 4K 30, max target quality for me, puts it back in 15 gigs. So now I've got 30 gigs worth of files on my computer. Um, I have plenty of storage space because I this is an editing rig. But if you don't have storage space, you can always export this and then um, go ahead and delete the older files. Now once something like this with the data is exported, uh, I would then go ahead and pop open Premiere Pro, which is my editing software of choice. You guys might have a different editing software of choice. Once this opens up, I would create a new project. And so for example, if you want to look at my Ontario 45A project, it would look a little bit like this. I'm not sure what media pending is. All right. so. Uh, this is basically what it all looks like chopped up and then my audio track with all my voiceover recordings and everything is right here on the different uh, A2, A3 audio track recordings. Um, I did go ahead and add my rear cam over the top and I did that in the Premiere Pro editing software and that's pretty easy. Once you get these two lined up, it's just super simple stitch. Uh, throw all your uh, rear cam footage over the top of your front cam footage put it picture in picture up here in the corner and then you're pretty much all set as you can see uh, I've chopped this up I've got my jump cuts here and everything and then the different you know uh, talking points that I wanted to talk through are all in these different audio tracks so there you have it folks uh, that's pretty much it that's how you would export you know the full race with data uh, if you wanted to do a voiceover somewhat like I've done like I said um, in that video link um, that I showed you guys in the beginning of this video. If you want something similar to that and you want to do a voiceover and chop it up and sort of do race commentary, then you would need an editing software like Premiere Pro uh, or many of the free softwares just like iMovie HD or anything that uh, comes with your MacBook. I believe there are a couple other free options for Windows, but I'm not super privy to those. So whatever editing platform and software you use, that's totally up to you. Uh, you would just jump in here, record your voiceover, chop up your clips, do your race commentary, and then export this one more time uh, to an actual smaller file and get it ready to go for YouTube. I really recommend actually compressing these files. You don't want to upload 15 gigs to YouTube. You can. It'll just take you like two or three days. And when I first started any YouTube videos, it would definitely take me a very long time to upload because I was exporting everything at uh, best quality ProRes, which is basically meant for repeat editing, which is what I've done here.
All right, guys, uh, I hope that helps. I know this is a little bit different format video for many of you guys. I promise I'll get back to my regularly scheduled cycling content uh, soon enough, but I figured I would give you guys sort of a walkthrough. I've seen a lot of GoPros on a lot of people's heads. <laughs> I've seen a lot of GoPros on a lot of people's bikes. Uh, you can see there's GoPro right here. And uh, if anybody's interested in making actual race videos, overlaying their data and doing doing it, I guess, as efficiently as possible, I hope this video helps you you knock that out. And I love seeing everybody else's perspectives, you know, from the different races across the United States and everything. So it's super cool that, um, you know, people get to watch this stuff back, see what they did in races, you know, identify some of their own mishaps or maybe what they did well. But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button for me. It helps me out tremendously, helps other people on YouTube see it. So if you think it'll help them out, go ahead and do that. And then if you're new to the channel, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you around, and you can see more race videos like this. While they're not my primary content and focus, uh, they are going to pop up from time to time, especially during a pretty heavily scheduled race season. Uh, so that's all, folks. I hope to see you again soon.